Yes, uh, today. Lechon. I just want to share with you. I don't know if you're going to hear this message. Well, but I pray that God will help me to convey to you. I, I was learning about the passing by of Jesus. The passing by of Jesus. Maybe we can write that. The passing by of Jesus. The passing by of Jesus. The passing by of Jesus. Jesus was created as for us. He was brought for us. That when we meet him, something must happen. But we don't know how long. How many opportunities we are given. Of him passing by. And we meet him. Or we recognize him. The passing by of Jesus. Was so amazing that we don't understand even. More. We can learn it better. Because in the Bible there are three stages. Of Jesus. The first stage is when Jesus was brought in the temple. And there were people who were filled with the Spirit. One man called Simeon was prompted by the Spirit. He came to Jesus. Anna, who was serving God in the house. She came to meet Jesus. I began to learn that meeting Jesus it didn't just happen. Because it's only two people here and it's recorded. They came to meet Jesus when Jesus was passing the temple. Brought to the temple. The second stage of Jesus is when Jesus went with the parents in Jerusalem. And when he was there, and the Bible says they were going to worship, when they came back, he was left there. And they searched for him three days. And later they found him again in the synagogue. They ask him, why have you done this? He mentioned, you don't know that I'm supposed to be in the things of my father. To them, they thought he was lost. To them, they thought Jesus was lost. The first stage, they brought him. The second thing, stage, is when they he thought he was lost. And he reminded them, I'm supposed to be the things of my father. The last stage, it was no longer in the synagogue. It's when he was filled by the Spirit of God after baptism. And the same Spirit led him to the desert. Jesus, yes, so. on the third stage, was led to the desert after he was filled by the Spirit. He was led. He didn't decide to go. This was the beginning of Jesus of being led by the Spirit of God. Now we learn that Jesus, after he was filled, wherever he goes, he will go because of the leading of the Spirit. And Jesus, could not just repeat going to one place. We can see Jesus repeating. 
The Bible says Bible he will enter the city in the evening he left the city to Bethany. In the morning he left Bethany to come to the city. Now, we are reading that on the road there was a fig tree. So the passing of Jesus to that fig tree never happens once. It has never happened once. Because we see him entering and coming out. I want to show you something. The first time Jesus, when he passed there, is when he was moving from Bethany and Bethpage. And they took a colt. And Jesus climbed the colt. He passed and the fig tree was there. He entered Jerusalem. And the Bible says he looked around. And after that, and he went away to Bethany. But this time he came again. He passes the same fig tree. He entered Jerusalem. He comes out. But that's the reason why Jesus cursed that tree. Because he knows that when he passes, if truly there is something that is supposed to happen, it was supposed to happen. The passing of Jesus was supposed to provoke that tree to produce fruit. He knew when he reached there that if he can be there and pass there this tree as is the creator it must have fruits remember the Bible says if we don't bear fruits we will be cut off thrown to the fire and burn so Jesus was still standing on that the tree was symbolizing us that we have been given chance to recognize his passing. And as his passing, we are bound to bear fruits if we recognize his healing. That is why the Bible says when Peter, when they were coming back, when Peter realized that the tree dried off, he was shocked to say, why, Pastor, the tree that you have cursed has dried off. And our Lord Jesus says, have faith in God. In other words, if you don't have faith in God, you will face the same thing. Most of the time, we look at the scripture, we think like it says, have faith in God, so that we will say to the mountain. Whereas the Bible says, have faith in God. I don't know if you are hearing it. Jesus said, have faith in God. Because if now God allowed Jesus to pass and you don't have faith in him, you are going to be cut off. You have been given chance to repent. You have been given chance. He is not just passing. He passes because the Spirit upon him is directing him. I don't know if you are hearing me. The opportunity the spirit of God to pass today demands us to have faith in God so that whatever we believe will be able to produce or will have fruits. Because we have faith in God. If you believe today the spirit of God is about to move here. But the spirit of God won't move all the time. Because Jesus, when he moved, he moved with his spirit, led by the spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. I've been reading, I found that when Jesus moved to a place, he came back. The second time is judgment. 
The first time when Jesus was Lama called to come to Bethlehem is when Lazarus was sick. And we can hear that there was a miracle. But the second time he was demanding their faith in him. To extend that the Bible says Mary was sitting on the feet of Jesus but Martha was busy and judgment came that this time we are not here for miracles. This time we are here for our lives. So the passing of Jesus changes your life you are here for your life, not for a miracle. I'm here for my life, not for a miracle. When the Lord passes by, your life will be put like a screen. It will be screened and check if you are worthy to bear fruit. The Bible says on that time Martha was troubling busy like many of us who are busy. But Jesus said this man has chosen the best thing. So the passing of Jesus makes Jesus to bring judgment to say this one has chosen the best thing and you are busy with useless things. I believe today after this service we will understand that if he passes or if he passes by will be available, will recognize that he is passing because there is a certain assignment he wants to do with us. If you are hearing me say, I want to show you something from the book of John. Chapter 1, 29, verse 24. Chapter 1, 29 to 34. 29 to 34. Iri. Yes. The next day he was, he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the, the sorry, this is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I and has pri priority over me. For he existed, existed before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I am baptizing in water so that he would be publicly revealed to Israel. Listen, this is John speaking. The Bible says the next day. But before that day, the, 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 the Pharisees and the Levites, they came to John and said, Who are you? Who are you? Can you tell us who you are? And he explained about Jesus. He explained about himself. But the next day, we can see, we can see Jesus coming Jesus. to him. So that he must speak about him. The first time, John the Baptist got a test. They came to ask him about Jesus and him. If we can read John chapter 1 verse 19. Can you just read there? You will see what they did, the Levites to him. This is the testimony of John the Baptist yes. when the Jews sent priests and Levites to him from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Did you hear that? Mm. So here, John was facing a test so that he must say, I'm not Christ. So that he must be able to identify himself and also identify Christ. And the Bible says when and we have read, it says, the following day, 
Now Jesus came to him. Then on Jesu utlawiye. And Jesus was not coming to speak with him. And Jesu nasi asato wuleri chanaliye na. Because he was, he answered them right. Jesus came. Can you just read, Mama, verse twenty? Verse twenty. Hmm. Jesus came to him. And he confessed truthfully. And Are you hearing that? Mm. He confessed truthfully. I will let our relation. Carry on reading. And he did not deny that he was was only a man, but acknowledged, "I am not the Christ," meaning the Messiah, the Anointed. He said, "I'm not Christ." I'm not in Christ. But the next day, after he did that, the Lord came to him. Here, you know, here I was learning something. That if he didn't confess truthfully, the Lord could not come to him. Now the next day, the Lord came to him. And when he came, he said to his disciples, look, the Lamb of God. Look, this is, this is the one I was telling you about. I don't know if you're hearing. Listen to this. This is just a temptation that this man is supposed to face. The Lord is supposed to come and pass. You need to declare this is the Lord. He cannot pass me. I have to say he is the Lord. I'm not the Lord. There are times when the Lord passes by. We are failing to talk about him as the Lord. The first thing is, he was questioning, are you Christ? Or are you the Lord? He said, hey. No, I know Christ. I'm not Christ. The anointed one, I know him. And the Bible says, after he said it, the following day, the Lord came. When he came to him, he said, hey, this is the one I was talking about. This is the one I want to I just want to show you another verse. On the same chapter we are reading. Can you just read verse 36 to 37? John chapter 1. Job chapter 1, 36, 37. Mm -hmm. It says, The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following him and asked them, what? Can, you, can you read 36? Verse 36. Yes. It says, and he looked at Jesus and he walked, so as he walked along and said, look, the Lamb of God. Can you hear that? Amen. The reasons why the Lord came to, to John. The first thing was, yeah, the Bible says, they came to test him. Are you the Lord? Or are you the one? He says, no, 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 no. The Bible says, he answered them truthfully. And proved that he is not the anointed one. There is the one. In other words, he knows the one. And the following day, now this one who's known, the one he knows came to him. And now he began to say, you see, I didn't even know him. I was not able to recognize him. This is the one I was sent to baptize with water so that he will be revealed truly is him. So he came to him and he began to talk about him. I have recognized him. But the last thing that we are talking about here is the Lord here could not come to him again. He walk along with them. When he was walking along, John said, hey, if the Lord passes here, I must speak what is right here. He said to his disciples, hey, look the Lamb of God. 
You're not supposed to follow me. This is the man you are supposed to follow. Look at the Lamb of God who took away all the sins. And John agreed to lose his disciples for him. And he showed everybody that there is that one who is better than me. We are living in a time where we win people to ourselves. When we start to walk with the Lord, we have to paint everyone that there is this person there. It's not us, it's he. I'm walking with him. He's there. The Lamb of the Lord. The Lamb of God. Who took away all my sins. We can lose whatever we lose. But if we point at him, we have done what is necessary. In fact, we are called to do what is necessary. Whether we win or lose. Whether we have all or not. When the Lord passes by, he's challenging us. If we know him, if we declare him truthfully, he will come to us. If we talk about him truthfully, is going to come to us. And now when he comes to us, we we'll talk about how we recognize him. When we understand him, that is he, tomorrow he will walk with us. And when he walk with us, we need to declare to others that it's he, it's not us. There are many people who are here today. We have been quiet for a long time. And the Lord is about to pass by. If you are hearing me say amen. And we cannot be quiet anymore. Because when he passes by, we discover who we are. We begin to understand who we are. We will say, this is the Lord. Is he? You know, the Bible shows several times. I will just try to tell you something. On John chapter 4, we can see the baptism of water was orchestrated to John. But when Jesus started to baptize many people, he realized that this is not my calling. And God could not speak to him until he leave the ministry of someone to be of someone. Can, can you just read John chapter 4 verse 1? John chapter 4 verse 1. Here. So, when the Lord learned that the Pharisees had been told that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing but his disciples were, he left Judea and returned again to Galilee. Carry on reading. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And jo Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, Sat down by the well. It was then about the sixth hour noon. Amen. Amen. Can you hear that? Jesus never wanted to be compared with anyone. Because we, we mm. understand that he was filled with the Spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. And the Spirit of God makes him to understand that these people are beginning to compete him with John. And he says, it's better I go back where I come from. It's better I go back to Capernaum. But when he was on the road, the Spirit of God said, hey, go to Saika. Because once you discover the spirit is leading. You will understand that there is no competition. You will understand that you are supposed to do what you are called to do. And the Bible says he was 
bound to be going to Samaria. In other words, on the road, the spirit said, Turn. You are supposed to pass somewhere. You're supposed to pass somewhere. There was a program from the spirit of the living God. Jesus was going to Capernaum. But the spirit wanted him to go to Saika. To meet someone there. It takes someone there to recognize Jesus in the Bible. But he went once there for a person who was like a prostitute. And I don't know if you're hearing it. Listen, we need to do something about this. When the Lord comes and pass by, we don't know if it is the last opportunity. Because the Bible says he was forced to turn to go to Saika. And when he was going there, he found that he was so tired that he never wanted to eat anything. But look what he sacrificed, sending everyone away so that he is dealing with one person. Jesus is here today. He will pass it. Pass so close to you. He has left all for you. I don't know if you are hearing me. When you pass by, the the, your life will change. Your trouble will be over. You have to pass by for the sake of your repentance, for the sake of your redemption, for the sake of your breakthrough. He will live on and be led to Direction. Today, Jesus is supposed to go to Capernaum, but he will come your way. I said, There is someone there who has rejected life and faith. She's tried to get married, but she cannot get married. Someone is trying to do business, but he can't do business here. Someone is trying to do something, but he's failing. The Lord always will be directed to a certain person and to deal with the situation of that person is about to pass by. I say he's about to pass by. If you hear me shout hallelujah. We read John chapter 5. We can hear the man who was, who was sleeping there for 38 years. And the Lord Morena. Turn at the back of uh, Jerusalem uh, and come to the ship gate. Enter there and go straight to the pool. And he found a man who was rejected. I'm talking about Jesus now who's led by the Spirit and who will go to a place and never go back there. When we read, we find that he went there and he never went, came back there. When he reached the pool of Bethesda and he found a man who was rejected. A man who doesn't have a name. Today he will come here. You will find a man who has rejected. You will find a woman who is facing trouble. You know, I went, I traveled in Jerusalem. I went on the ship gate. It's at the back. It's called the ship gate. Because they sacrifice sheep. There. So when you enter there, you have to go up to the pool of Bethesda. And the Lord went there. When he reached there, and he found that man sleeping. And the man that was rejected, his life was, was finished. Something new started to happen to that particular person. The Lord is about to pass by. I say he's about to pass by. Something is about to happen in your family. As it's about to happen to your family. On John chapter 9, the Lord was passing and the disciples saw that the Lord was looking at the man who was born blind. The man was, Jesus was looking. When he was looking, 
The disciple says, ah, we know. This one cannot be healed. But Jesus knew why he was passing there. And he looked at that man there. When he looked there, the disciple says, hey, tell us. We know this man was born blind. Who sinned? The Lord says, I'm not just coming here. I'm, I'm, I've been directed. I have to work the work of the one who said us. We are called to work the work of the one who said us. I'm not just coming here. I don't just pass by for nothing. And this man doesn't have faith. But I've got something. This man can't see me. Can't understand what is that. But I've got something in me. There is someone who's listening to me. Yeah. I say you might not be having faith. You might not be seeing clear. But the Lord is directing you to pass by and change the situation that you have from birth. The situation you got it from birth, you are born with it. When you grew up, you found that in your family is like this. You found that your, your life is like this. The sickness is like that. But when the Lord looked there, he came straight there to change the situation. The Lord, when he passed by, is there with purpose. I see him passing <laughs> by here. And someone is about to <laughs> shout hallelujah. I say you will pass here <laughs> and, and something is about to <laughs> happen in your life. I don't know if you are hearing it. He can take the useless to be useful. He can redirect someone who doesn't have direction. He can raise someone who is not raised in the family. Let me prophesy someone here. I said, the Lord is passing here. I said, the Lord is about to pass here. Your life will never be the same. I said, your life will never be the same. I see victory in your life. I see success in your life. I see God lifting you. And no one will pull you down. If you, if you hear me shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't take the passing of the Lord as nothing. I've, I've experienced the passing of the Lord. Passing by. Passing by. There was a time when he was passing by. And the Bible says he goes through. He didn't go around Jericho. He goes through Jericho. Because he knew the person is going to be there. He goes through. The Lord is going through direct. And he went straight to find a, a short man there. A man that everybody was talking bad about him. And the Bible says he went through. When he entered straight. And the man says, hey, it's long I wanted to see this man. When we read, we hear that the Bible says he wanted to see Jesus, how Jesus was. In other words, when he heard about Jesus, he said, if I can see Jesus, I will change my life. There are some people who are here. There is something about to change in your life. If you can meet Jesus, your life will never be the same. If you hear me shout hallelujah. Zacchaeus said, if I can see Jesus, who he was, my life will never be the same. And the Lord says, let me pass through. Because if I pass aside, I cannot get this man. Because he's a man of the city. He's a rich person. He's not outside. He's not on the outskirts of the city. He's inside the city. He knows where he can get to. Even yourself, you must avail yourself. Because the Bible says, Zacchaeus, when he realized he, he was shot, he says, I must avail myself. I must put myself where you will be able to see me. I cannot allow this to pass. I cannot allow this to pass today. Someone is here. You cannot allow this service to pass. 
So you cannot allow this service to pass. It's about to pass here. You will change your situation. You will change your life. You will change whatever you are facing. If you hear me shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are tired of just sitting here. I mean, even the blind people, when <laughs> they hear that he's passing, this is what is happening here. They never say now we found business. We are going to get a lot of money. Say, so, no, it is the Lord passing. Say, hey, I'm tired of my blindness. I'm tired. If you recognize him, check where you are tired. Of. Where you are tired. The blind Bartholomew said, hey, I'm hearing a big noise. Here. What is happening? They say, the Lord is passing by. He says, No, I have to scream now. I have to scream because. I have to meet this man. He has to change my life. I don't know if you are hearing me. I have to, I have to scream. The Bible says he shouted. You say you are making noise. You are making noise. Say hey. I will make the noise more. The Lord say come bring him here. Bring him here. We need people who can recognize he is passing here. They don't have limits of calling him. They are not afraid to shout them more when other people are silencing them. I'm here to tell you, you have been going down because of people. You have been going down because of the situation. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord is here he is passing here. You better shout to, to be on top of your own voice. I, I told myself that my situation cannot be above my, above the power of my God. Amen. My situation cannot be. I have to understand it's him passing. It is him. Yeah. This situation I'm going through that I've been prayed mm -hmm. for several times. I don't need to pray now. I need to I shout to the top wellech. of my voice. It's passing here today. Something is about to happen oh, here. Your enemy is about to wonder what are with you. There is something is about to happen in your life. If you hear me shout hallelujah. Can you, can you tell someone say hey. The, the Lord is passing here. But he won't pass me. Down. He will touch my life. And my life will be different today. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are two things. The first thing is we don't know the timing. Number two, we don't recognize him. We don't know the timing of him personally. And we don't recognize him also. But if we achieve this too, no one can stop us. I don't know if you are hearing me. No one can stop us. Let me prophesy someone who's listening to me. This year, this year, this year, this month, receive what you are here for. I said, receive what you are here for. You've been crying to God. It's not time to cry. It's time to take over. Say, I'm taking over. Say, I'm taking over. Say, I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. The devil wants you to cry. He wants you to look at yourself. And the Lord is passing by. He wants you to look at your trouble. That him. Says, look unto him. I'll find the finish of your faith. When he passed by, say, hey, it's him. I look unto him. The Bible says, yes. He faced shame here. Yeah, and despise it. Because of the glory that is there. So even myself, I'm facing shame here. Yeah. 
despise it. I speak about the glory where God is taking me. There's the glory where I'm going. Yes, I'm facing trouble here, but I don't care. I'm facing challenges here, but I don't mind. I see the glory, the glory where the Lord is taking me. Mark 5, 29. It says immediately, mm. her flow of blood was dried up and she felt in her body and knew without any doubt that she was healed of her suffering. Mm. Glory to God. Are you hearing that? This woman said, Lord, Lord is passing here. The Lord is passing. What must I do? He says, I can see I cannot break that wall. But I have my own faith here. If I can touch the helm of his garment, something will happen to me. Because I have to use this opportunity. I want to tell you that the opportunity of you sitting here it's possible you won't get it after 10 years. Use it. Use it. Because opportunity you get it grab it with all your hands. Use it. Mm. I want to give you something. I want to tell you something. If you are a traveling minister, you will understand what I'm saying. The moment when you leave your church and you are going to minister to the people you don't know, the Lord will start to show you you had this time to pray. You had this time to fast. You didn't use it. Therefore, there you are half or you are quarter. You cannot achieve this. In fact, mm. that's why the Lord that is why told the disciples go and wait until you are full. Because when you, mm. the moment when you go God, out, you begin to discover how far you are. Are you half or full or what? You have been given opportunity. The Lord passes and gives you opportunity. You never use it. If you are hearing me say amen. You begin to know how far are you? I don't know if you're hearing me. You begin to understand that this is why I'm like, this is because of this. Same place you're going for interview. You will understand if you have really read your notes thoroughly. Because what you do here is demanded there. What you're doing here, it will be demanded there. You're going to sit on the panel of interviewers and all of them are looking at you. And you didn't do the thoroughly notes here. I don't know if you're hearing me. So you are given chance to meet the Lord. Use it. Tell yourself that when I'm here, I'm like a crazy person. Yeah. Yeah. I was... I was watching the service of Mama on Sunday. She was singing a song, a Venda song. Of Chirizi. Of Chirizi. So she was singing that song. I said, I wish I'm there. I don't know if you're hearing that. I said, I wish I'm there. I said, I'm listening to this woman singing. I wish I can sing and jump. Because I don't want the Lord to pass me. From today when you come here, use every opportunity. Remember what Jesus said. The Bible says they went to Jesus, the Jews, and said, hey, what are you saying? about those Jews that Pilate killed them and mixed their blood. And Jesus said, if you don't repent, you'll die like this. 
Because now you are learning. And now you understand and you want to be there. And you understand you are failing you here. You can use all your power to get the grace. Get it today. The Lord is about to pass it. Grab him with his clothes. I say, I'm tired of this situation. This is the problem that I know only. When the Lord look around, he says, someone touch me. He say, hey, everybody is throwing on to me. It's because the problem was known, but the one who was having it. You know where you are. You know what is happening with you. You know what you need. Someone here, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you understand, I need the Holy Spirit. So if the Lord is passing me here, I must make sure that I grab every and use it today. If we still have people in Charis, how can I just say we are worshiping because it's time? You are wasting time. This is the time that you open your heart. You say the Lord is passing. Or am I going to have it tomorrow? I have to do something. I'm forgetting about everyone. Because I don't know if tomorrow will come. If you're hearing me say amen. Are you, are you hearing this message? The Lord is passing. He must give you something. And that thing you are crying for. You are not just crying for it. It's not by mistake. You are truthful. You need it. And you will have it. I say you will have it. I say you will have it.